Good morning. I believe we have a very special day in front of us today. Um, I have a few announcements. Uh, the first one is the mission committee is meeting at the uh, computer room at 11 a.m. today. And then also I received from Esther this morning, uh, we want to keep Ethan Conrad and his family in our prayers. He had a snowboarding accident yesterday. Uh, he severely broke his right arm. He's going to be requiring, requiring a couple plates and some pins. And as of this morning, um, at 8 a.m., he was in surgery. So uh, they asked for uh, continued prayers. Uh, but on a, uh, a joyful note, uh, yesterday was a, a good day for the youth in our church and also uh, at the Mount Pleasant uh, Music Department. The uh, Jazz One uh, Indian Hills uh, got first place in Class A, or Class 3A. Uh, Jazz Two did very well too. And in Pella, the In Motion um, Show Choir, they got third place in the finals. Uh, they received second place in the daytime in Class 3A, and uh, also got best best vocals. So that's something we can be proud of with our youth. So at this time, anybody that has any additional announcements uh, would please come forward. As we keep Ethan and his family in our thoughts and prayers, we are preparing for our youth ski outing next Saturday. Um, and um, disclaimer one, we do require all of our youth to um, take a lesson uh, before skiing, as well as we keep them in our thoughts and prayers. Not that either of those are a guarantee against injury, but um, like driving to church, skiing has its risks, and hopefully the uh, benefits outweigh the uh, concerns. Uh, I do have uh, permission forms and information sheets for uh, the youth families, and I would like to have those back by Wednesday. We still uh, probably need another adult driver, and so if you want to come ski with us or drink hot chocolate in the ski lodge or just drive back and forth and go shopping in the Quad Cities, that would be great. And uh, so see me afterwards if you are interested in doing that also. Then disclaimer number two, the duct tape that is all over Fellowship Hall is not to cover up uh, tears, rips, or spills from the youth group. Uh, we are practicing with our uh, taping a pattern for a prayer labyrinth, which we will be sharing about in the um, church forum next Sunday. And so hope that you can uh, attend to that. It will be an interactive Sunday school lesson with some information about the history and practices of prayer labyrinths, but then we will walk one as well. Uh, and then finally, we do have a sign-up sheet for um, Press On Wednesday Night Meals if you would like to fill that out also. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for all being here to worship with us today. Uh, thank you to those of you who kind of got, had to take the circuitous route to your normal seats. We <laughs> appreciate your flexibility. We're kind of spread across the back there. Um, we really appreciated Jason playing the clarinet. I'm glad you thanked him because he had to be an hour away from here for a rehearsal at 11 o'clock, and so he has <laughs> left already to do that. That's why we put that one as the prelude. The special music this morning is entitled, Oh, the Deep, Deep Love of Jesus. I think those of us in the bell choir probably think of it as uh, once to every man and nation, if you remember that from the previous hymnal. If the tune sounds familiar, that's, that's what you're thinking of when that one comes along. We'd also like to thank again the Marie Mendenhall and Connie Taylor families for the use of their memorial gifts for the, the four biggest bells that you see at the right-hand end of the, the tables, and we'll be dedicating those later. When I was talking to Bob uh, back in the fall when the bells first arrived and mentioned that we would certainly dedicate them some Sunday, 
he said, well, maybe you can play Amazing Grace for Marie and Connie. And we are indeed playing Amazing Grace for Marie and Connie. When you get a chance, there's a, an insert in the bulletin with uh, some history of, about the bell choir on it that you can read. Don't read it during the sermon. Um, because I'm sure Travis has worked hard on the sermon, so listen to that, read it later. Um, I had to shorten it twice to get it in there, so there are a lot of details, of course, missing, but uh, it gives you a a little overview of the the choir. Um, After the service, if you come across to Fellowship Hall, Mindy and Parish Life, we thank them for, I think we have some bell cookies and punch over there, and we've got a little display with some other pictures. the pictures from the um, PowerPoint. Oh, sorry, it is in the lounge. Excuse me. Um, the pictures from the display that I don't know whether it got clear through. Okay. Anyway, the hard copies are in there if you missed the the display. Um, okay, and they're going to pop that back on after church if you want to see it run through. And thanks to Wendell for the the coaching here and also for... uh, (laughs) Also for putting up with... I mean, the living room has been knee-deep in in choir materials for about two weeks. And uh, I need a label for this. I need a picture for that, you know. And so he's been doing all that. Um, I do want to make mention of the fine substitutes that we have who come just all the time and fill in in any place in the choir. And in fact, you know, we ring with them in performance occasionally. And I see some people here today. So would you stand up if you have ever rung handbells in, the, in either choir in this church? So, yeah. I think I figured out that something like 75 people have come and gone through Sound Appeal. Some of us haven't gone, but um, (laughs) Betty's still here. She's from the original choir, and Marilyn and I aren't far behind. And about 50 people have migrated through Soul Notes over the years. I appreciate how hard the, the current members have worked on the music. Some of these are ones that we have... They were favorites that we wanted to do, but we had new people that had to be incorporated in, so they've shown some patience and helped them learn the, the, those new things to them. And then Amazing Grace is a new one to all of us. And I don't know whether I got everything. Thank you to Amber for the slideshow. Thanks to the worship committee for suggestions and, and help with the service, and to Esther for arranging and rearranging the, the bulletin several times. Uh, Reminders for the coming week, Soul Notes are practicing on Wednesday. Sound Appeal is not practicing on Wednesday. So I will put in a, a little plug here for Spamalot then, because Spamalot opens on Wednesday and plays Wednesday, Friday, Saturday nights, and Sunday afternoon. And there's King Arthur right back there in the back of the <laughs> sanctuary. <laughs> And part of the pit is here and there, and you know there are a lot of Presbyterians, so you'll want to come out and see that. Yeah, that's a hard act to follow. So I'm just actually just going to be pleading here. Um, the Presbyterian Church is going to be uh, helping with the uh, meal, the Fellowship Cup, this coming Wednesday. We do it every month. And Jack Becker is going to be making pork loin roast, which will be delish. Um, we are going to be making um, Betty Becker's chocolate cherry cake and some perky potatoes. Uh, we're probably looking for two more cakes to be made and a couple more pans of potatoes. I don't even have who needs no stinking clipboard. I've just got this. And so if you'd like to help, we can sure use your help. We'll need them by uh, Wednesday morning. Okay, thank you.
Well, Marge already said come to the play, so that's what I was going to say, but that's all right. So you can hear it again. You should come to the play. Tickets are on sale at Brown Shoe Fit, $10 if you, if you don't have them. But, yeah, Wednesday, not Thursday. Friday, Saturday, 7.30, and then a 2.30 matinee next Sunday. But it's very fun, uh, and it's been a lot of fun working with. But since she's already said that, I, I think the one person that she didn't thank of the bell choir was Marge herself, and none of us would be here without her. So. you're all just standing what we stand, stand right back up here and uh, we can all join together in the call to worship God is our rock of refuge our strong fortress God saves us from wickedness and cruelty God has done great things for us we are waiting to hear what God wants us to do Forgetting what lies behind, we greet our future. We press on, responding to the upward call of Christ. Please join me in the opening hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory, number 420. How much easier it is to criticize others than to see our own faults. How often we have been ruled by our fears rather than our faith. How often we cling to the past rather than heed God's call to new life. How seldom do we utter praise to the one who touches our lives 
with great possibilities. Let us seek God's forgiveness that we may know God's mercy. Please join me in the prayer of confession. O oh God, we so often choose to ignore your upward call, Christ Jesus. We confess that we settle for lesser goals while you summon us to rivers the realm of man. We seldom look beyond our own interests to the well-being of our sisters and brothers. We can see the wasteful acts of other people, but not our own selfish habits. We need forgiveness, O oh God. Do a new thing within and among us. Please join me in the assurance of pardon. God summons us to return and welcomes us with joy. We are forgiven in the name of the heavenly call of Christ. Together we find our horizons expanded and our priorities refined. God forgives us and puts the us one day more, the promise of fullness of life. Embrace God's pardon with the renewed faith joy. be seated. At this time we'll have the two cent a meal offering.
Let us pray. As your word is read, sung, and proclaimed, help us catch your vision and dream, your dream of being the people you desire us to be as faithful followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's psalm lesson comes from Psalm chapter 71, verses 1 through 8. It is also located on page 532 of your pew Bibles. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust. O Lord, from my youth, upon you I have learned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been like a portent to many, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day long. Thank you. 
The epistle lesson this morning is taken from Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 16, which is also located on page 198 of your pew hymnals. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature by, be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. My wife, uh, Mary Lou, learned that the bells were going to be featured today. <clears throat> she said it was appropriate that I was speaking on a Sunday that featured dinglings. <laughs> How many of you uh, watch TV? <laughs> A few of you do. How many watch the program Antiques Roadshow? Yeah. They go different places. They've been to Des Moines and other cities all over the place. And people bring in uh, old stuff. <laughs> and then an expert uh, talks about it, tells the story, and tells how much it's worth. Recently, we were watching the British version of Antiques Roadshow, and a woman uh, came with a whole bunch of posters. And these posters were red with white print on them, and they were from 1940, which is before some of you came along anyway. But they were printed up during World War II, and they said, keep calm and carry on. Now, as a child, I remember going to the movie, and they had newsreel film. Any of you remember newsreel film? Yeah. And that's how you got your news. There was no TV. You got some news on the radio, but here you could see what was going on probably a week or two <laughs> after it happened, but... I remember seeing in the, in the newsreel the Germans bombing Britain. And they did terrible destruction. They did a lot of damage. They killed people. They wounded people. You could hear the, the air raid sirens going off and then see people running to the various shelters. And then later on, the sirens uh, blew again, and it was clear, and people could go back to their homes. It was a terrible time in the, uh, the life of Britain at that time and several other countries. Well, while Germany had bombed them, they had never actually invaded Great Britain. But there were rumors that Germany was about to invade Great Britain, which would have been really devastating. And so the, the government had these posters uh, printed up and distributed. And if they knew that Germany was going to actually invade, they would put them up in all the post offices and public places all over Britain saying, keep calm and carry on. It was a way to encourage a people during their times of difficulties. That was a, a great message for Britain then but it also is a good message for us today. Now, I mentioned this to one of our daughters, not the one that's here, and uh, she informed me that actually that theme is kind of coming back, and you can, uh, you can get T-shirts with that on it, and there's uh, blankets and all kinds of stuff that's coming around so that 
well, it may sound like an ancient thing back in 1940. Apparently, it's, it's making a comeback. And uh, the other day, I was in the mall in Burlington, and there was a guy with a T-shirt, and it said, keep calm and rattle on. <laughs> so I don't know if that's part of that same thing or not. But. <laughs> But when you think about it, Paul kind of followed that theme way back when uh, he was preaching and the church was beginning and spreading and he had a lot of difficulties and a lot of opposition and yet Paul managed to keep calm and, and carry on. And I think he had this idea in mind when he wrote to the Philippians. Let me just read part of that text again. Brethren, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature be thus minded. Many of us have been watching the uh, Winter Olympics in Russia as you probably know, the Olympics began in Greece. And I'm sure that Paul must have gone to the huge stadium at Philippi and watched some of the events that went on there. He could see people packing that stadium, and he watched the runners as they strained every muscle and every ounce of energy to run as fast as they could around the track and finally reach that end of the track where there was a garland of pine, a symbol of victory, and they would touch that garland of pine. And then the emperor of Philippi would present to them the trophy as the winner of the race. And Paul kind of sees himself as, as running and straining every muscle and not looking back but moving forward and trying to accomplish the things he wants to accomplish for Christ and winning the race and the ruler of heaven presenting the price. And when you think about it, Christians have the same goal that Paul had to serve Christ. We might have different ideas about what that means, what the church is about, what we're supposed to do, but we do want to serve Christ. Christ set us an example in how to live, and we want to follow that example and do the best that we can. But sometimes when we look at our lives, we see how far we are from that goal. And Paul says that part of our problem is that we let the past block today and block out the future. If we are going to move forward, we have to move away from what happened in the past. And I think a good model for our lives and for the church is to keep calm and carry on. The first thing is to forget our past. Now, we can't exactly forget it just offhand because some of the things in our past have to be dealt with. Paul doesn't mean we should just forget completely about the past. We have sin in our past, and sin can get into our lives and work into our lives. And if we don't deal with it, it, it becomes guilt. And guilt acts like rust. Rust can corrode metal and, and guilt can corrode our lives. So we have to, to bring that before God and ask for God's forgiveness. Jesus said, if we, are, if we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive us our sins. And so we bring the sins of the past before God in repentance, and he forgives us. And that's kind of like a, a rust cleaner. It cleans out the guilt from our lives. But we not only have sin in our lives, we have mistakes. Mistakes aren't quite like sin, and yet mistakes can hurt our lives. If we think about them, if we think about the poor, poor choices we might have made or the things we would have done differently, Failure sometimes can hinder us from moving forward in the future. So we need to analyze the mistakes that we've made and see if we can learn from them. Thomas Edison 
had hundreds of failures when he was trying to invent the electric light bulb. But he dealt with each one, he analyzed each one, he learned from it, and he moved on, and finally he was successful. And if he would have given up, we might still be using the kerosene lamp today, I don't know. In the past, we have developed a lifestyle, and the lifestyle is something that's a, a part of us, and does it reflect our goal to serve Christ? We have values. Do those values reflect our goal to serve Christ? We need to make sure that that lifestyle is in tune with Christ. Also, we've had successes in our past. For most of us, it hasn't been all sins and mistakes and failures. We've had some good things. And these good things help us to build up confidence. And we need confidence to move forward for Christ. And we need to have a balanced view of ourselves, seeing our, our sins and our good things and our bad things and, and kind of see our life as a whole. And this will help us to serve Christ. But once we have dealt with the past, we must forget it. This isn't easy. It's difficult to admit our sins to God and ask for forgiveness. It's hard to look at our mistakes and evaluate them and learn from them. It's a struggle to measure our lifestyle by our Christian values. But the most difficult of all is to forget. I'm sure there are people here today who are still remembering events of the past and these events haunt you and sometimes they tell you, make you say, look at me, I'm no good, look at what I did, and we remember. But if we fret over the past, we miss today. Some of us remember in our childhood the world being much different than it is today. And we probably remember it as much different than it really was back then. <laughs> but you remember the time when almost everybody went to church? Remember the time when your name was more important than your social security number? Remember the time when the life was much slower and the pace was easier? And some of us long for the good old days. But the good old days are not coming back. I remember several years ago, I read a, a magazine called The Christian Century. And somebody wrote in and they said, the Christian Century isn't what it used to be. And the editor replied, you're right, it isn't. And it never was. <laughs> <laughs> we have to forget the past if we're going to see what God is calling us to do today. If we're going to ch do what God wants us to do today. We can't be wrapped up in yesterday and make the most of today. And if you're not making the most of the day, there is no tomorrow. So Paul tells us to deal with the past forget the past, and then we can give our all to reaching the goal. New opportunities will present themselves today. New challenges will come our way today. New things can happen in our lives today if we concentrate on what's going on now. A few weeks ago, they played uh, what they called a Super Bowl. Some of you may have seen it. It was in New Jersey, next to New York City. And the Seahawks and the Broncos played. Remember that? Anybody here? Oh, OK. You remember who was favored to win? The Broncos. But apparently, the Seahawks didn't think about that. They didn't think about the fact the Broncos were supposed to win. They didn't think about the fact that there were millions and millions of people watching the game. They didn't think about the fact that they'd lost other games, they'd made mistakes. They got off to a good start. They concentrated on getting that ball and making a goal and doing the best job that they could. Broncos, on the other hand, were overwhelmed by the whole thing, <laughs> and they never got their game together, and so it ended 43-8. to eight. 
what some have called one of the most boring Super Bowls in recent history, but the point is that we have to concentrate on what we're doing and, and move forward. We don't want to go to a surgeon who brags about the great operations he did yesterday. We want to know about what he's going to do with us on the table today. We don't want a teacher who won top honors in college. We want to know what that teacher's going to do with our kid today. We're not concerned about government leaders who have this great record and all these great things that they say they're going to do. We want to know what are you going to do now. The question is always now, not what happened. Paul says, keep at it, press on. What if the medical profession would announce we have overcome smallpox, diphtheria, yellow fever, and polio. We're going to rest, not think about heart disease or cancer or AIDS. We'd be up in arms. We're thankful for what they've done, but we want them to keep on going. Our single purpose, you see, must be to serve Christ. Our body, our mind, our strength must go into that goal. Our family, our home, our leisure time, all must be woven around that goal of serving Christ. Each day we look for those opportunities. We look for those challenges. Maybe we did a poor job yesterday. Or we might have done an outstanding job yesterday. But the important thing is, what are we going to do right now? Forget the past, Paul says, and move forward for Christ. Well, this is true in our individual lives, but it's also true in the life of the church. The church has an impossible task of bringing persons to a vital relationship with God through Christ. It is to help persons respond to God's love. And many times the church, like individuals, is hindered by the past. If the <clears throat> church is overcome by past events, it won't be able to to meet the challenges of today. First Presbyterian Church has been here I mean, April 15th, 1840. Any of you remember that? Uh, even, even Don Young probably doesn't remember that. <laughs> but that's almost 140 years. I mean, 174 years. And during that long period of time, there's been an awful lot of successes but there's also been some failures. But many of you can remember when the sanctuary was full almost every Sunday and we had classes for all ages and they had a lot of people in it and the church had people of various ages. The love, this lovely building was built, which is handicap accessible. But in recent years, we've had difficulty in keeping a minister We've had two short-term pastors and several interims. Recently, we had a short-term interim. <laughs> Combining the two, I guess. But just when we thought things were getting off the ground and we were going to move, we're back to square one. And this has caused some people, unfortunately, to leave the congregation. The attendance has dropped, except for today, of course. <laughs> And the giving is down, and this hurts the spirit of the congregation. And some people wonder whether we can ever get off the ground and move forward again. And yet we have a strong youth program, and we have a good music program with the choir and the bells. And we do a lot to help the community with food and other aids. And there's still a desire among many to find that permanent pastor who could lead this congregation in moving forward and doing the work of Christ. So our task is to keep calm and carry on. We can't let the events of the past ruin today. We may have good memories of the past. We may have bad memories of the past. Paul tells us, forget the past and think about the future. So as individuals and as a congregation, we must seek to do what Christ calls us to do, and we must press on, and our war reward will be great. Keep calm and carry on.
Shall we sing our hymn? We've already had the announcement about Ethan Conrad, who probably is in surgery or just out of surgery right now. Are there any other uh, joys or concerns? Shall we pray? Oh God, we give thanks that we can gather together in your name. We're thankful that we can worship, that we can sing these songs and hear scripture and prayer and can draw closer to your presence. We're thankful, especially on this Sunday, for our bell choir and for the years that they have given us in serving you and in making a joyful noise. We pray that you will lead us as we continue to worship 
that we might glorify your name. We pray, O oh God, for Ethan Conrad as he is in surgery from his fall. We pray for others among us who may be ill or in the hospital or shut in. We pray for those who are making difficult decisions in their lives. We pray for those who are sorrowing. May your strength and your love surround them and lift them up. We ask, O oh God, that you will lead this congregation through this time of transition, that we might be able to move forward and to find that person you are calling to come and lead us to, to advance your cause. Be with us now as we continue in this service, for we pray the prayer that your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us respond to God's love for us by offering ourselves this day in love to God and one another. Let us receive this morning's offering. <clears throat> 